The popular alternative to the My Mini Plus, the RJ35XX, has received an update with a new Plus model. Keep watching as we unbox, compare the three models and test a bunch of emulators to find out if it's worth buying or upgrading to. First we have the Ambonic RG35XX Plus itself which we will take a closer look at shortly. Next we have a user guide which is in English and Chinese languages. There is a screen protector and wipes for when applying it. And in the box is a USB Type-C charge cable. The Ambonic RG35XX Plus measures around 4.61 by 3.19 by 0.87 inches and weighs 186 grams. It is available in three colours, white, grey and transparent black. The 3.5 inch IPS display has a 640x480 resolution which is ideal for retro gaming. It has the same control layout as the original model, with D-pad and the usual gaming buttons and a menu button. On the left side is a volume rocker, and on the right side from top to bottom are the power button, reset button and two micro SD card slots. In the first you will find either a 64 or 128GB card for the OS and storage. The second slot is empty and can be used with another micro SD card for additional storage. The bottom has a USB Type-C port which is used for charging, and a 3.5mm headphone port. The top has a mini HDMI port which you can connect to your TV or monitor for big screen gaming. The back has four buttons which can be used like triggers and shoulder buttons in games. You will also notice there is now a battery compartment if you wish to change the rechargeable battery. The Ambonic runs on the H700 quad-core ARM Cortex-A53. It has a dual-core G31 MP2 graphics processor. I don't recall seeing any handheld use this before, so it will be interesting to see how it performs. Inside is a 1 gigs LPDDR4 RAM and it comes with a 64 or 1 to 8 gigs micro SD card. For communications, there's Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2. Keeping it powered is a 3300 mAh rechargeable battery, which lasts up to 8 hours depending on the emulator being used. Let's first compare the original RG35XX and Plus models to see the differences. Physically, the Plus model is ever so slightly thicker at 2 versus 2.2 cm. The buttons on the back have a different design, which are more ergonomic for your fingers to rest on. The main changes are the internals. We have the H700 processor on the Plus and ARM Cortex A9 on the original. There's now 1 gb of LPDDR4 instead of 256 MB DDR3 RAM. The Plus also has a larger capacity 3300 mAh battery compared to just 2600 on the original. And now with the Miu Mini Plus. We see that the RG35XX Plus is a little larger overall. With that, you get a bit more space for your hands. The H700 processor with GPU runs faster than the MyU processor. The MyU Mini Plus only has 128 megs of RAM, but in most cases, this is all you need. The MyU has a slightly lower battery at 3000 mAh. You are going to get around the same battery life as the RG35XX Plus. One thing lacking on the Mayu is a HDMI port, something the RG35XX models both have. The Ambonic RG35XX Plus uses the same front end found in the original model. There is one new native emulator to the supported systems, which is a PSP emulator. We will check out the performance later in the review. You have a good list of systems to choose from, including various arcade emulators, 8 and 16 bit systems including Master System and Mega Drive and handhelds such as the Neo Geo Pocket and Wonderswan all of the usual systems you would expect to find. The RetroArts section has calls for a multitude of systems including OpenBOR, Dreamcast, Pico 8, Atari 2600, PC Engine and Game Ports. There's plenty to choose from, however some emulators work better than the native emulators so you may have to experiment a bit for what is best for the game. There is a favourites and history menu where you can find saved and previously played games. And the settings menu has various settings you can change such as the screen brightness, date and time, language, retro art settings and more. 
It is a basic looking front end, but it does the job perfectly. It's fast and easy to use. As you would expect, all of the 8 and 16 bit systems are going to run absolutely fine. So we will cover the newer systems in more detail and later show some footage from older systems. PlayStation 1 games out of the box are very playable on the Plus model. We tried our usual test games and found no issues with the performance. Amongst the games tested are Crash Bandicoot 3 which works perfectly and Gran Turismo 2 which was smooth as silk. On the Dreamcast we tried a few different games and overall the performance is very good. We saw, or should say heard, no lags on Crazy Taxi and all of the usual games were running fine. You will see some frame drops now and again, but RetroArch adjusts the frame skipping and in most cases the games play fine. The same applies for the Naomi and the Tommy's Wave emulators. We tried a few different dual screen games and they were all quite playable. One important factor is the screen is not touchscreen, so for some games they will be very tricky to actually play if it requires touchscreen input. Overall it's pretty good, but don't expect every game to be perfect. With the PSP in Tekken 6, there's no frame skipping enabled at 1x rendering resolution. We are getting around 70% speed for full frames per second. However, you can use the frame skipping to speed things up. On God of War, we got around 20 frames per second to give a comparison with other handhelds performance that we have reviewed. Low demanding games generally are playable with some frame skipping. The RJ35XX Plus is a good upgrade from the original version. The new H700 processor provides a decent performance increase over the original with faster performance on PlayStation 1 and Dreamcast. Games on the original RG35XX that were running just a bit too slow are now working great. You will also find more playable games with the PSP, though many are still not running at full speed and require frame skipping. Garlic OS 2 is currently in development for the Plus model. It's not ready for a full release just yet so we did not try it. Once it is released, it should be up to the same standard as the original version and just as good as Onion OS on the Mario Mini handhelds. If you already have a RG35XX, then it is perhaps not worth the upgrade unless you want a faster PS1 and Dreamcast emulation. The same could be said if you already have a Mario Mini or Plus handheld. If you are looking to buy your first handheld, then Ambonic RG35XX Plus is the one to go for. It outperforms the RG35XX and Mario Mini Plus, and apart from the lack of custom firmware right now, it is overall the better handheld. Until then, you can still play the same games and more, but without a fancy front end. You can learn more about the Ambonic RG35XX and order yours today at droix.co.uk and droix.net. We have a sale running throughout December, so grab yours now at a great price. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next video.